Okay, welcome to my video cast guide on using pure data for making computer music. I'm going to show you how to get set up and teach you some fundamentals using pure data. So uh, let's get started. I recommend downloading pure data if you don't already have it from puredata.info it's a weird URL but uh, it's a good website and the reason I direct you there is because they have a package called PD Extended which I highly recommend it contains a number of add-ons which turn out to be very useful and uh, in some ways I think essential so uh, it's available for just about every operating system that uh, you're could be running. I'm on uh, Ubuntu Linux right now. So uh, once you've downloaded it and installed it, it will look something like this when you run it. Uh, it's a blank window, it doesn't look like much. Um, we're going to fix that. The first thing I recommend that you do is turn on the DSP, which stands for Digital Signal Processor. Uh, you won't hear anything until you've checked that on, so let's just turn it on now. Uh, and then next, we'll go to File and make a new patch. And again, we are greeted with a uh, terse blank window. So, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you an object. Objects are the fundamental sort of atomic unit of a pure data patch and um, to get one we click on put and click object and you will be presented with a dashed box with a cursor a command prompt <clears throat> ready for us to enter our first uh, the name of our first object um, I'm going to enter DAC, D-A-C, which stands for Digital to Analog Converter, and it ends with a tilde symbol, which means that it's an audio patch, it's a convention used, or an audio object. Uh, and then I click away to instantiate it, and now we have uh, an object, our first object, and this is the output, the system output, which lets us make sound. Uh, so there's not much going on here yet. Let's make another one that actually generates something, generates a signal. So click object, make another object, and another prompt. This one is called OSC. Again, with a tilde. OSC stands for oscillator. And I'm going to add something here, space, and a number, which in this case is the frequency that I want it to oscillate at. I click away and it's instantiated. Um, you may have noticed on our DAC object that there are these two bold lines at the top. Those are inputs and uh, they're here on the oscillator as well. We'll get into that momentarily but there's also an output here on the bottom. I'm going to click and drag a line from the output of the oscillator object to the DAC input and then uh, we will get a tone. It's very simple but it makes sound. So um, this is currently giving me an output of 440 Hertz. I could change that with one of these inputs um, so I'm going to put a different thing in here, a, uh, a number, here's our number widget, and I'm going to click and drag the output of the number to the left input of the oscillator. Now I can't change this, I can move it, but I can't seem to edit it. That's because I'm in edit mode. Get out of edit mode. 
click edit and uncheck edit mode or hit control E which is what I do because it's um, much simpler and quicker so now you'll see my cursor is no longer a pointer like it was I'm gonna hit control E so you can see uh, instead it's the standard cursor and now when I click this it doesn't select it anymore when I click and drag you will see the number changes and the frequency also changes there you have it you can see this is a little tedious so if I wanted to move between a range another way I might accomplish that I'm going to go back to edit mode with control E and delete this is to use a vertical slider or a horizontal slider I prefer vertical sliders um, you can see here that this has an output as well if I connect it to the oscillator input go out of edit mode now uh, I can quickly scale a range notice how it's not very high I'm going to right click this and go to properties to change a setting. There are a bunch of settings here. Really all I'm, carry, I'm concerned about is this bottom and top. I'm just going to make this bigger by putting a zero at the end and click OK. Now the top of the range is much higher. So there's the V slider We've um, played with inputs and outputs using the oscillator object and the DAC object. You may be wondering, well, how did I know that the uh, left input of the oscillator is the frequency input? Well, uh, any object, you can right-click it and go to Help. And a very helpful window will pop up. Uh, PD has great documentation built in in this format. Uh, it'll tell you, you know, what the inputs are, what the output is, any parameters that can be passed, so on and so forth, and also some helpful um, other objects you may be interested in, like these. Um, so it's a very useful resource. I recommend checking it out with any object. And then um, if you want to know about objects, I recommend going to the help browser, click help, then go to browser, and you'll see a bunch of stuff on this list. That's because we're using PD Extended. What you want to check out is just the PD folder, uh, not that one, pure PD folder, which is full of several examples showing you some basic stuff. Um, and how it's done and you can sort of sift through those and see what modules are used for what. Um, these other directories are, are full of examples of the extra modules that come with um, PD Extended. They're all very useful and interesting and worthy of your attention as well. So that's it for uh, this video. We'll get into some more advanced stuff in the next one.